Well, from one of the most famous golfers in the world to another female trailblazer, Tanika McKee is the only full-time black woman caddy on the LPGA Tour. On the bag for Amy Olsen, and she's carrying the clubs while battling multiple sclerosis. She wants to see an increase of diversity on the tour, and she's this week's subject of our series, Women Changing the Game. Well, with that, I'm delighted to welcome in Tanika herself onto the show. Tanika, it is wonderful to see you. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by. Now, growing up in Nassau, Bahamas, you found and fell in love with the game at a young age. But at the time, you were being told that it was a white, rich person sport. I mean, what were the challenges in ignoring those stereotypes and just pursuing this newfound passion of yours? I mean, with it, you, I pretty much didn't really pay attention to it. I just kind of was good at it, and I knew it was going to be a way that I was going to be able to. So hearing it, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. I just think the hardest part was not being able to play with very many friends. Like basketball, I was able to play with a lot of friends, and you could find a basketball court a lot easier than you could find a golf course. And I think that's the message that we'd like to send out to all the youngsters, you know, just focus on the passion and continue to do what you love to do. Now, Tanika, you didn't come from financial privilege by any means. You didn't have the fancy clothes or the expensive gadgets or even know that golf lessons existed. But your parents, they did everything they could to give you and your brothers the opportunity to play and succeed in sport. How valuable do you believe golf and sport is to a young woman's life? Oh, I think it's extremely valuable. I mean, in, in anyone's life, like, I feel that it's easy to get caught up in, in negative things or in bad things if you, if you have idle time. And for me, athletics, it kept me extremely busy. Between school and athletics, it kept me extremely busy. So that kept me out of a lot of trouble. I wasn't able to see a lot of things that maybe other people would have seen. So it also kept me a little sheltered. And it also, it helped me eventually get to go to college. And I was just about to touch on you playing golf through college because it was after that that the LPGA became a dream and a goal. I mean, how much of a motivating factor was representing not just your country, but also showing other little black girls and boys from the Bahamas that they could make it out there too? Oh, representing my country. I mean, it's something that the first time I did it when, when I was 10, you know, going to another country and hearing your national anthem is, I think it's one of the greatest honors, especially in, in athletics. So representing my country was from that day to even now, it means, it means so much. And it just shows you that no matter, no matter what you could do or, or anything, like once you work hard, like you can achieve once you put your mind to it. And that's such an important message. And I mean, ultimately, caddying opportunities became a huge part of your journey to the LPGA Tour. Looking at where you are now, we just saw some photos there with you and Amy Olsen. You formed such a special player-caddy relationship. But tell us how you first met Amy and how it changed the entire direction of your life and career. Uh, the first time I met Amy, it was in the 2017 uh, Pure Silk Hair here in the Bahamas. I was coaching. I was a community golf coach at Redlands Community College, and my boss was nice enough to give me two extra weeks off. So I stayed in the Bahamas for two extra weeks, and one of the weeks I ended up working for Amy. And it was a lot of fun, I mean, just seeing the best, the best golfers in the world and being able to be side by side with one. And I remember the first time on the first tee, when they was like, Amy Olsen 120 collegiate events, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> this girl, she extremely good. I didn't know who she was until I literally caddied for her. So once I heard that, I was like, man, this, this is something. So hearing that, I was like, oh, I got to try and win a collegiate event. I mean, I, I never did, but Amy's got enough that I can borrow one. <laughs> um, so obviously caddying, caddying was never a dream. I always wanted to attempt to play. But then when I saw what playing would, would mean, would mean giving up the possibility of finishing uh, my college career. I, I felt like, hey, I could be on the LPGA tour and do something completely different. And I joke about not having to practice. So that's the best part about caddying. <laughs> I love that. Now, it was after a, a year of caddying full time for Amy that 
you had a true sense of empowerment. But then in November 2018, Sort of the unimaginable happened. You had your first seizure and ultimately diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I mean, firstly, how are you now health-wise and how has that shaped your outlook on life? Honestly, right now, I, I feel perfectly healthy. I mean, I feel 100% healthy, minus the things that I can't see that are in my body. But there are no, no limitations. I mean, and I thank God for that. Um, and it, it was it was to an extent a scare, but I never really was fearful. I mean, I felt like I I did. Like I said, I caddied I caddied full time for an entire year, so I got to go to all four four continents. So I felt like at that time, like I did exactly pretty much all a 24 year old at the time could ever ask for. So I felt completely satisfied with life, um, and now I get to continue to do it yearly obviously last year was a little different but with with my diagnosis i mean obviously the the things that are different is obviously i'm a little more aware of my body i listen to it a little bit more i eat healthier i have to take pills every day and get get checked up by the doctors every three months but outside of that it's it's life is normal well we're glad to hear that you're feeling okay tanika and and just finally you are truly trailblazing your way through this game you are still now the only black woman caddy on the lpga tour full time what do you think the key is to encouraging more diversity into the game and the women's game i mean i think i think the big thing is you just have to you have to reach out you know and in my with me is it's okay to be different like the first time i went out there is especially when I went to Korea, like I was the only black person on the course, you know, because there were a few at the time, it would have been Cheyenne Woods and Mariah Stackhouse, but they, they weren't able to play in those events. And for a few seconds, I was like, man, I am the only black person out here. And at first, it felt, it felt intimidated. It almost, I, I almost second guessed myself, like, do I deserve to be out here? But you just, you just have to be bold and you have to believe in yourself. So just in anything, like it is okay, it is okay to be different and it is okay to succeed. Don't allow, I mean, and I think that's the biggest thing is you can't allow yourself to cause you not to be successful. I think self-doubt and self-pity is, is worse than pity from others. And I think that's the, that's the thing that I would tell people is that you have to believe in yourself and you have to push yourself to succeed because at the end of the day you you have to be your own advocate i mean that is very well said tanika you have such an important message which i know you're so passionate about sharing and inspiring youngsters into the game so we really do appreciate your time and have an amazing year uh, this year with amy on the bag that us open by the way incredible it was so emotional but thank you so much for your time Yes, thank you guys so much for your time. The U.S. Open was unbelievable. Hopefully one of these days we'll be able to walk off with the trophy. <laughs>